Hey everybody, how's it going? One of you sent me an article that I think belongs in Reddit's Not The Onion. I really thought that I had been fished when I saw the BBC logo next to these words, but it was real. Are you ready? One, two, Apple loses money on phone repairs. Thank you and props to whoever at BBC had the good sense to put that in air quotes. Apple says it loses more money than it makes when repairing customer devices such as iPhones and MacBooks. Answering questions from U.S. politicians investigating anti-competitive practices, Apple said it had lost money on repair services since 2009. Apple typically charges more than unofficial repair shops to fix things such as smashed screens. But the company also said customers were free to obtain repairs from any repair shop of their choice. In September, Apple was sent a list of questions by a U.S. House Judiciary Committee, which is investigating competition in digital markets. In response to a question about how much the company earns from repair services, Apple said for each year since 2009, the cost of providing repair services has exceeded the revenue generated by repairs. Now, this is obviously something that I find surprising. Whether someone has a battery unplugged and Apple's quoting over $400 when the battery's unplugged. Um, we represent Apple. We represent Apple. So let's see what's going on with this MacBook. Yeah, that's charging voltage right there. So what did she say? What is her problem? This works. Why did Apple say this would be $475 to repair? I mean, it turns out. Oh, look. 58%. It was unplugged, Paul. Yeah. The battery wasn't plugged in. Uh, and when they opened it up, they said one of the pins that connects the charging port to the battery was bent, and they needed to replace the logic board, and that would cost me $475. Or they're telling somebody that needs a pin bent back that it's going to be $1,200 to $2,000. It's like very dim when I try to turn it on. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll jump out the back and have a look on the inside. Sure. So what are my options now? This, oh, well, what I was going to say is basically all the components that we need to replace is going to cost more than $1,000. So To fix it entirely will yeah. cost more than $1,000? Yeah. So it, the very least we'd need to replace is the logic board and the top case. So that we're looking at $600 plus $500, $1,100 with a labor of 100 And then if we need to replace the display as well, that's another 780 So... The display we may not need to replace, but we're still looking at a total of around $1,200. Wow. All right, so let's take a look on the inside of this. Now, this is where the screen is going to connect to the computer. Okay. So the first thing I'd want to do is examine that area of it to see what it looks like. See the, see the pin that's sticking out? Okay. So that pin is actually most likely the pin for the backlight. And as you can see, it's probably not making contact because it's bent outwards. And I got my set of tweezers over here, and I'm just going to try to push that back into the slot and try to get it back into its groove so that when I re-plug in the connector, it'll work. Uh, at the Apple store, they suggested this was water damage. Well, you can see that there are water indicators that have turned red, so that's why they got that idea, and they're by the battery. So this, this is a water indicator, uh, and these, these turn red when they see liquid. However, the thing here is that these not only turn red when they see liquid, they also turn red anytime there is humidity. So if you have this in a very humid room, all of these sensors will turn even if you've never spilled liquid on the machine. All right, so let's plug this back in and hope for the best. All right, as you can see, we've got an apple and we mm -hmm. have a light. So it's it fixed. Yeah, now... That, that took you like one and a half minutes? Or they're telling somebody who has an issue with their headphone jack on their iPhone that they need to get a whole new iPhone at 330 to 350 bucks. Tech-wise, this is Ira. Hi, I had a question about a problem I was having with my iPhone. Uh, do you do iPhone repair? Uh, to a point. What's up with it? Yeah, so I did something really, really, really stupid. It's an iPhone 6. It's probably out of warranty. It's like two years old. I, w I couldn't get my headphone plug out of it, so I kept pulling on it, and now the plug is stuck in the jack. Is that something that yeah. you'll be able to fix? No, unfortunately not. The headphone jack is basically hard soldered directly into the logic board. Okay, so you so the hard you're saying that on the iPhone six the headphone jack is hard soldered. It's soldered directly on the motherboard. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not on a separate cable that then connects to the motherboard. Mm, I don't believe so. No. All right. So what would be my option? Let's say if I if through you, like, would I be able to get the phone replaced, or is there any option other than just buying another uh, one? We would have to send it to Apple. You're looking at four to five days turnaround time and two hundred and ninety nine. 
<laughs> okay, so two ninety nine and uh, mm -hmm. about three to four days. I have one more question. Uh, would they preserve the data, or should I back it up before having the phone swapped? You should definitely back it up. They don't guarantee that they can do anything as far as the data goes, and in many cases, they just clear the phone even if it doesn't seem like it's necessary. So, $299. You don't get to keep your data. It takes four to five days, but the best part of it all is that the authorized play says that the headphone jack is soldered directly to the motherboard. Now, let's try unauthorized repair. Hi, Shop, I can help you. Hi, uh, do you fix iPhone 6s? Yes, we do. Okay, I did something really stupid with mine. I, uh, I was... I it tugged too hard on my headphones, and now the plug is pretty much stuck in the headphone jack. Is there any way to fix or replace that? <coughs> There's a couple of ways we can do it. Either we can fish it out of there, which doesn't work every time, um, but we can definitely give that a shot first. That's the cheapest way. Okay. Worst case scenario, we could always swap out that, that port on the bottom and just give you a new port, and then that would work. So right. I always figure way, that the worst case scenario is most likely what's going to happen. So what would that cost if you yep. had to swap out the whole port? It's a, it's a six, right? Yeah, it's an iPhone 6, not the 6S. Okay, so it is uh, 50 bucks plus tax. Okay, so $50, and uh, one last question. Uh, and I, I, I just called uh, one of the Apple authorized places, and they told me that the headphone jack is soldered directly onto the motherboard of the phone, uh, but I always thought it was that's some little true. separate piece that plugs in, so is it actually soldered? Yeah, that's I not true. A little nervous. It's not, on a 6, that's not true. Okay, so the Apple authorized place that told me something yeah, that wasn't true. So basically... So basically, the way that, like, even the Genius Bar, they just kind of spread misinformation to make you use their services. Um, That's what I was figuring, yeah. Yeah, because we've fixed, I think, five charge ports at least, you know, this week. So <laughs> it's not really, uh, it's pretty common. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. You can tell why it is I'm just a little skeptical of that, and I'd like to see their bookkeeping before I believe them and take their word for it. But there's this one of two things going on here. Behind door number one, they're lying, because there are many, many other companies that provide repairs at a more affordable rate than Apple does that have way less money in the bank than Apple does. Or behind door number two, they're telling the truth, and they genuinely are that woefully inadequate. So remember in that piece that I did where they were telling someone that if you have an issue with your headphone jack on your iPhone 6 or 6S, that it's going to be in the realm of $350 to replace the entire phone? That was surprising to me for two reasons. A, all you need to do is replace a $5 flex cable. That's $5 retail to me. I can only imagine what Apple's paying for it. You have to replace a $5 flex cable. This is something that Jessa could have her toddlers do inside of 20 to 40 minutes if she puts them in front of an iFixit video. And they're saying replace the whole thing. The second thing that I found strange is that the Apple authorized service technician that I called from Apple's website listed under AASPs is so ignorant of the product, he actually thinks that that's soldered to the board. He's not aware that that headphone jack is on a flex cable that plugs into it that makes it very easy to replace. Now, here's the thing. What if that's not the outlier? What if that's the way most of the company is? What if most of the people dealing with repair in the company are so undereducated and ignorant of how their own products work that when they do that swap out, they actually don't refurbish the original phone? Because there's this saying that you should not attribute to malice what you should attribute to stupidity. And perhaps we should not attribute to conspiracy, greed, and malice what we can attribute to stupidity. Maybe when they get that phone back, they're actually not refurbishing it properly, and that thing actually does get parted out to pieces. Again, I doubt it, but there's a small part of me that just kind of wonders, maybe, maybe they're telling the truth, and they are that stupid. So when the, the iPhone's new, let's just say that it costs maybe 300 350 to produce, and they're selling it for six to eight hundred bucks. Let's say you have one of the highest end versions. You've got the one with, with, with the, the biggest GBs, as they would say. And you swap it. Maybe they are selling it to you at cost, 
or losing a little bit. But even if it's a little below cost that they're giving it to you, they still have to pay the service center, the employees that take your call, shipping, all that stuff. So maybe they are actually losing a little. The only way they would make money back on that transaction is when they get back your phone that is a perfectly working phone that needs its $5 flex cable replaced and replace it and then sell that phone on the used market for the three to $400. And then they make their money back. What if they're so bad at running a business that they're not doing that properly? What if they're not doing that? What if that phone is actually being taken apart by that dumb little robot because the robot, uh, whatever, whatever they named it, is too stupid to realize that it just needs a new charge port and they actually scrap that? What if when they say that you have to pay $1,200 to $2,000 because of liquid sensors that tripped on a board that has no signs of liquid damage that I went over for five minutes, what if when that machine that needs nothing but a screen cable replacement goes back to them, that they actually dissect it or dispose of it because of liquid damage. So after they charge the customer the $1,200 for the board, the motherboard and the casing and all that and the battery and all the stuff they don't have to replace, what if they don't reuse the old one? What if that battery that has 100 cycles on it that's still good actually gets disposed of as e-waste? rather than removed and put into another computer because Apple doesn't have the tools to de-adhese the battery from its own machines. It's very possible that Apple is so bad at repair that not only can they charge that much money, but they can charge that much money and lose money at the same time due to sheer incompetence. And it's, while my gut instinct is BS, you're lying, get out of here with that crap, you're just saying that to save face in front of the U.S. House Judiciary Committee, a small part of me kind of wonders, are you actually that bad at your job? When you say this machine needs to be replaced entirely and this thing needs to get tossed out because of a fuse, what if they're actually tossing it out because of the fuse? What if they're actually tossing out $1,200 worth of stuff because of one bend pin on display cable? What if they're not screwing you but they're actually screwing themselves and then after they screw themselves, they're screwing you? The only reason that I'm genuinely hell-bent hell on believing that when they say this, that it's a crock of shit and it's lying and they know it's lying, is you just look at the amount of money that they have versus every other company that is in the same business. And it's hard for me to believe that when they receive that item back, that they're actually having the little robot recycle it rather than replace the charge port. It's just, it's hard for me to fathom that they are that bad at reverse logistics. But it is possible that they that they are. Now, don't get it twisted. I don't believe this. But even if I did believe this, even if everything they said were actually correct, that doesn't excuse any of it. Just because you're bad at your job does not mean it is moral or ethical to stop other people from doing their job for your customers that you don't want to service properly. Let's say that I'm Ford. And let's say that every time you come into my dealership because you need new oil in your car, I just give you a new car. Now, obviously, at that point, I am not profitable because every time you need oil changed, I'm giving you a new vehicle. So I would be able to say at that point that I'm not profitable at repair. But does that mean that it would be moral or ethical for me as Ford to make my car only run on a very specific oil that I'm the only one that has the formulation to, I'm the only one who sells it, and even if you figure out the formulation to it, I'm going to make sure my car tells that you didn't get it from Ford and makes it not work. No, that, that has no bearing on it. Just because Apple does not make money, and again, alleged, we're putting that in air quotes for a good reason, just because they don't make money off of repair does not let them off the hook for their countless anti-competitive and anti-repair practices. Whether you are telling companies like Intercell and Renaissance, hey, make this teeny tiny change in this charge chip so that it is different from everything else in the market and don't sell it to anybody but us so that nobody can fix our machines. Or they're set making their new operating systems not work with any screens that didn't come from them. Or they're doing any of this kind of stuff that they do on a regular basis with like the, the SMC. If you try to read the firmware from it, it just poof dies. I'm not letting you off the hook for that just because you're bad at your job. If they're that bad at their job, that the prices they're charging, they're not able to make ends meet, Tim Cook, I'd like to extend an olive branch. My email address is lewis at rossmangroup.com and my number is 347-552-2258. My consulting fee is SMCs, board views, schematics, and ISL 9240s. And this comes with a no fix, 
no fee guarantee just like all of our repairs here at Rossman Repair. If I'm not able to turn around your company and make your repair division profitable, I will give back every ISL 9240 and SMC that we get. And I'll even delete all the schematics and board views off of our system. Give it a try. What have you got to lose? That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think it's number one, that they're lying and that this is not true? Or do you think it's number two, that this is actually true because they are actually that incompetent? Or do you think it's a combination of both? I'm genuinely curious to hear your opinions. Please do let me know down below. Also, I'm sorry that I haven't been keeping up with data recovery videos, MacBook repair videos, and stuff like that. I've just been busy with all this administrative kind of rubbish, you know, getting insurance policies for the new place, finding contractors, and all of this stuff. I promise that when I am set up in this new place and all of this is done that there's going to be a lot more hard drive data recovery videos because Steve is going to have his own space for it he's not not going to be something like where nobody's allowed to go to the bathroom and Steve's filming a video anymore it, we're going to have a lot more of the board repair videos and we're going to have a lot more iPhone data recovery and board repair videos than we had before please uh bear with me while I'm in this transition process I promise you we're going to get back to the the content that this channel is uh, known for shortly. Thank you very much. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. And thanks for viewing.